Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds! This clip that you are seeing now is actually pre-recorded, surprisingly, um, because I was doing a bit of ruby grinding in between last episode and this one. And, well, as you see, I encountered a golden bee while rupee grinding. Now, for those who don't know, a golden bee, in this game at least, I believe, is a 1 in 50 chance to find just by cutting grass. So, once I found it, obviously, I caught it with the net and put it in a bottle. And then what I did was I went and headed to Kakariko Village and spoke with the bee guy. And when you speak with the bee guy, uh, when you have a golden bee in your possession, he will give you an item known as the Bee Badge. And what the Bee Badge does is, when you cut down grass and encounter a bee, from there on out, it will not harm you. It will only harm enemies, which is a really neat feature that they Im sort of improved on from A Link to the Past. I mean, you could catch a regular bee in a bottle with the bug net back then, and then release it through the bottle to attack enemies, but it just makes it a whole lot easier having an item like the Bee Badge for it. But anyways, how about we get on to the live content of this actual episode. We're here near our house, uh, aka Ravio's shop, and as you can see on the bottom screen, via the bottom screen, I maxed out my rupees to 9,000... 999 and at the end of the last episode I did not buy four I almost said three but I said it anyway I almost uh, I didn't buy four of the items that we were currently renting so what we're, be what we're gonna be doing to begin this episode after the clip about the golden bee is I'm gonna be buying these four items here the tornado rod uh, no I already have the ice rod uh, the hook shot, uh, the hammer, and the boomerang. Yeah, there we go. I had to look at my bottom screen for a second so I wouldn't mess up the items. Uh, and I'll actually do this after, um, after we buy the boomerang, but you see the sand rod there that Osvala had. I never really showed off the text that Ravio... No, I didn't mean to click on the fire rod. Uh... The text that Ravio says about the sand rod with Osvala, Sahazwala's apprentice, who is currently renting it and sort of kidnapped right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here's the text for that. Someone else is renting the sand rod. He rented it when I was in the village, seeing if there was a good place to set up my shop. He was in such a rush that I didn't get his name. Said he had important business somewhere. Anyway, I've got only one of each item, so you'll have to wait for that item to come home to roost. Just a neat little detail that I thought I would share. But anyways, now that we're done with that, let us finally, finally go claim the Master Sword. Actually, before we do the- actually, can I do this? Yeah, I can do this while I keep going. Uh, as you see, actually this is kind of hard to do. Uh, oh wait, no, it doesn't work. Oh no, I have to select it on the bottom screen. Okay, yeah, but we can still move. Uh, the quick equip, but it goes away in between, uh, it goes away in between each screen. But you can scroll between items, which is really cool for on-the-go stuff. Uh, but let's just get out of there. There we go. Alright, so, yeah, what we're doing is we're gonna be heading to, uh, the Lost Woods. I think I said Skull Woods earlier. That's a technical spoiler slash a dungeon from A Link to the Past. Uh, but anyway, let us make our way through here. Let us head upward. And let us make our way through the Lost Woods where the Master Sword is currently sleeping right now. Which is not very nice. Because us, the hero, we're, we're trying to claim that thing, you know, and... Be on our way to rescue the princess, because the, the princess needs our help. I mean, come on, this is like typical stuff here. But what's interesting 
about the Lost Woods in this game is there is a bit of puzzling in this. <laughs> Welcome to the Lost Woods! These woods will trick you into going back the way you came. But all hope is not lost. If you can follow me, then you can walk a little deeper into the woods. Watch carefully. So I apologize right now if I don't really commentate as much. Because, yeah, we need to follow the pose uh, in order to make our way through the Skull Woods. And I believe the Poe that I was tracking went upward. Yes, it did. Okay. So, now on to the next room. I really hope I can get this on the first try, but I don't think so. That was fun, but now we're going to mislead you. Now two of us will bounce around. So, don't follow the two of us or you'll wind up back at the start. Hehehe. <laughs> Think you can get it right? Alright, time to pay attention. One, two... I'm kind of using my... F I'm using one hand holding the 3DS. And another... To left, up... Alright, so down. I believe. I'm using one hand to count... Uh, to keep track, rather, of the pose and the other to hold the 3DS. This is very weird. But we are on the final room here. Very well done! Huh, guess it's time to really stump you! Now three of us will bounce around! Don't follow us! Hehehe, <laughs> think you can get it right? Okay, so this one, the three pose, they stay next to each other for the first two switches, and then they're gonna switch with other pose. I only saw two left, right, oh no. I only, I know they went left and right. Oh god, I'm gonna go up. Oh, I was wrong, I should've went down, no! Well, I guess with this I get to show off that if you fail, one, uh, the pose will start disappearing to make it easier on you. So, the first time, one pose disappears, I think two disappear the next time. I want I'm actually curious to see if they will just go down to three pose if you fail enough. I assume that's what happens. That'd be pretty funny if it didn't. I should also pay attention, just in case. So we're gonna go through this again here. I think I'm following the correct one. I'll be very sad if I'm not. Alright, I think this one went to the right. So, let's hope we're right. Yes, we are. Okay. And now, let us attempt this for the second time with the two puzzle. Alright, here we go. No need to read the text because we've already done this. Alright, to the mislead. Yes. Alright, time to follow. Here we go. Got my fingers ready. Two, one, two, right and down. All right, so go up, I think. I hope I'm correct. All right, I'm correct. All right, last one again. Here we go. Let us get it right this time. I was really hoping I could get it on the first try. All right, here we go. Three right there. Also, I think my lisp was like in full effect with that uh, that saying just there. All right. All right, it's down. It's down. It has to be. Yeah, we did it. Oh, thank goodness. Oh man, finally. Not gonna lie, I was kind of hoping I would be able to show off it possibly going down to like three pose per room. But anyways, we have arrived in the ambiotic place where the Master Sword sleeps. There are animals all over, there's grass to cut down, I could rupee grind if I really wanted to. Now that I spent 3,200 on buying the other four items from last episode that I didn't get. But, 
Instead, we're gonna go up here. Too bad the Book of Medora isn't in this game, or else I could read the Highland text on the scripture in front of the Master Sword. But with that being said, it is time to pull the blade of Evil's Bane. We got the Master Sword, a blade for a true hero, and it fires a beam when we are at full health. Hear me, Link. The sword you hold in your hand is the one and only Master Sword. Now that you possess that blade, you can break the barrier at the castle! So, make haste! We don't have much time left! Get to Hyrule Castle! Oh god, this theme, it's so wonderful! And as you see, there are the beams when you fire the Master Sword at full health. It is so great. And look, there's a bee friend to help prove that the bee badge works. Alright, let us exit the Lost Woods. I think I can fly out with the bell, can't I? Yes, I can, actually. Alright, so... Let us go to our house... And once again, Irene is not present anymore on the broom, which is pretty strange, not gonna lie. But, with that, that is going to do it for this episode of The Legend- Oh no, the bee was attacking the one guy, and we lost our full sword beams already, come on. That is going to do it for this episode of The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Next time, we will step forward speaking to Sahasrila, and hopefully it will not be too late for Lady Impa and Princess Zelda. So with that, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. I'm sure the princess wouldn't mind if I took a second before rescuing her hopefully, to explain how I actually grinded rupees. Well, behind the blacksmith's house, there's a certain tree that you can use the Pegasus boots to run into, and it can drop between 30 and 200 rupees. Now, the highest I've ever gotten was about 100, uh, so it's probably very rare to get 200, but nonetheless, if you ram into the tree behind the blacksmith's house like I did, uh, you should be able to get a fair amount of rupees in no time. Uh, for example, it took about four hours for me to get to the maximum amount, which is 9,999. Uh, there are other methods to grind rupees. You could use the Rupee Rush minigame. Uh, you can do the Kaku minigame over and over. But I think it's more effective to just do this, ramming into the tree behind the blacksmith's house. Now, in order to reset everything, you're gonna have to go uh, transition the screen twice, just so it completely resets uh, that screen there with the tree, allowing the rupees to quote-unquote respawn in the tree. But with that being said, and now I'm gonna get on out of here, and next time, Princess Zelda awaits! Yeah, hopefully it's not too late. That would be... that'd be kind of bad.